Hey everyone, my name is Allison Rudderson Lear and I'm an engineer here at Saratech. Today we're going to be talking about Mechatronics Concept Designer, which is an application in NX that allows you to interactively design and simulate the complex motion of electromechanical systems. In this case, we're going to be looking at a simple plant. You can see we have our part up here, we have a couple of conveyor belts here, and an arm here, and a bin to eventually catch the part. You can see at this point in the design process, we haven't really fleshed out any of these designs very well. We just have the requirements, a functional model, and a logical model for what we want our mechanism to do. So first off, let's play, play this mechanism and see what happens. Nothing. That's because we haven't defined any physics yet. So first we're going to define joints, and then we're going to define collision bodies. And then we'll have the basic physics of our model set up and ready to go. So first of all, I'm going to create a joint. Joints restrict motion between geometry, and they limit things like force, torque, the distance two bodies can move apart, um, and rotation. So first of all, I'm going to define a rigid body. And I'll start with the floor so we can see what that looks like. You can see in this dialog box I have the option to have NX calculate the mass properties for me, or I can choose user define and set them myself. I can set initial velocities for translation and rotation, and I'll give it a name. I'm just going to call it floor. And you can see it appears in the physics navigator over here as a rigid body. Now when I play the simulation, the floor is affected by gravity, and it falls away from the rest of the parts. So I'm going to go ahead and assign rigid bodies to the rest of these, so they're affected by gravity as well. At this point, I've gone ahead and assigned rigid bodies to all the other parts in this assembly. I'll go ahead and select all, and you can see they're all highlighted orange. Another easy way to check if you've assigned physics to all the parts that you want to is to just play the mechanism, and you can see that everything that I assigned a rigid body to is now affected by gravity and drops out of the graphics window. So obviously having all of our parts drop out of the graphics window is not really what we want to see when we go to simulate our mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and create some joints. You can see from this drop down we have a couple to choose from. And these basically restrict the degrees of freedom that the part you select has. For example, a hinge joint connects objects along an axis of rotation, so you only have the single rotational degree of freedom. A sliding joint also has one degree of freedom, but in translation. A cylindrical joint combines the two, so you have one distance degree of freedom and one rotational degree of freedom. And you can look through the rest of these to see what they do. I'm going to select a fixed joint for the floor because I don't want that to go anywhere. I'll go ahead and select the floor, click OK, and now when I play the mechanism, the floor is fixed relative to the absolute coordinate system. I'm going to go ahead and create fixed joints for some of these other parts too, like the conveyors. Now I want to create a fixed joint for this base but I don't want it to be fixed relative to the absolute coordinate system. I want it to be fixed relative to the floor. If the floor moves, I want this base to move with it. So I'm going to select the base as the attachment, the floor is the base of the joint, and click OK. And now this base is fixed relative to the floor. I'll go ahead and click play to make sure I've assigned everything the way I want it. And yep, those are the parts that I want fixed. Our next set of joints is going to be hinge joints. I want, I want to control how these arms move around each other and around this base. I'll start with the long arm. I'll select this for the attachment, the arm base as the base, and now I can specify the axis vector and the anchor point. For the axis vector, one convention that I've seen often is to have the vector point opposite the base of the joint. It doesn't really matter too much, but it does define 
the direction that nx calculates as the positive direction. Um, so in this case, we have the base as the arm base. So I'm going to change this to the positive x direction. And for the anchor point, I want it going through this hole here, because that's where eventually in my physical model, the joint itself will be. Start angle is zero, and I'll click OK. Now when I play the mechanism, the long arm rotates around the base at the anchor point that I specified. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the short arm with the long arm as the base. So the short arm is our attachment, the long arm is our base. I'm going to point the axis vector opposite the base, so that's going to be the negative x direction. And again, the anchor point where our physical hinge would go. Before I play the mechanism again, I'm also going to create a sliding joint for our bin. I want the bin to be able to slide along next to this long conveyor and maybe catch the part if it falls off. So the bin is our attachment. For the base, I'm going to choose our floor, because I want the bin to slide along the floor. For axis vector, that's going to be the direction that our sliding joint can slide in. So that's going to be the positive x direction, because I do want it to slide parallel to this conveyor. Click OK. And you can see all the joints that I've created up here in the physics navigator. So I'm going to go ahead and click play. You can see our arms rotate around each other and around the base the way I wanted them to. And then I can click and drag the bin to make sure it has the right degrees of freedom.